Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitcher International with me, Dieter Solonchowskas. Today is the 26th of May, 2023. So we have welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Friday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Look, I'll disappear here from that little left corner in there. Um, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, just a quick mentioning of our Easy Markets website, which you can always check out for more information about us, guys. Now then, uh, let's jump into the charts. We do have a, a few um, instruments to go through, but to be honest, I think it's going to be a little bit on the quick side today because... In general, um, the same analysis that I have been talking about throughout this whole week are, are still valid and uh, uh, so at certain levels, uh, certain targets have been reached, uh, certain still are uh, kind of waiting, we're waiting to be reached. Uh, but um, in general, looking at Nikkei, for example, look, uh, I talked about this and one thing for sure that was working out, the fact that we said that if we do get a little retracement, as long as we stay above this highlighted territory, which is between the 30,663 and 30,720 levels, then yes, uh, we will uh, remain uh, will remain positive here in a way, and uh, yes, we will kind of keep an eye on this barrier, this uh, current highest point of May, near the uh, 31,353 to uh, 58 zone, approximately around here. Good potential target. Um, my only question is, will this actually be the Mm, the highest point of May or you know will we actually stay like this somewhere around here and just moving sideways uh, because look we still have around what today's day to go through and next week uh, three more trading days so yeah um, let's see how if we can clear this territory but look as long as we remain above this highlighted zone as I said here uh, yes I will aim for that 31,358 territory for the downside I need to see a drop below that 30,663 territory somewhere around here and then we could consider a bit of a retracement here to the downside ASX 200 so um, my target got reached great 7,135 this is what I was aiming for um, now what's next well, this is where I'm going to uh, draw my arrow this way. And uh, yes, I'm going to aim for lower levels if we do uh, drop and stay below the 7,131 territory right here. If we do get that, then yes, my next target is the 7,064, 76 levels here. Um, for the upside, um, look, uh, I think that this upside line needs to go away. Um, so I think maybe for the upside a push somewhere above um, this territory here may signal a larger correction uh, to the upside. Um, and uh, look, ideally I have this 7,215 territory. Yeah, I will probably stick stick to that level um, in order for me to consider, let's say, some slightly higher levels here. Or in other words, a correction to the upside, you know, uh, before, let's say, another possible leg of selling. Because again, don't forget that we're still below this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 17th of April. Now, uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, FTSE China 50 index. Um, here, look, um, I talked about this level, this 12,600 territory. Um, we got that great, so we reached it. So now what's next? Um, basically, 
at this point i'm still keeping a close eye on this target on this level uh the 12600 territory in general um i need to see a nice good clearance here i mean we did get a drop already but as you can see the bulls are really fighting hard and they really like this level as a support so um let's let's wait and see i would say um at the moment like i said at the moment we are just balancing uh around this or should i say oscillating around this hurdle um if we do drop again below it then yes i will go further south and potentially aiming for this territory this uh 12 000 mark um and then we'll go from there a uh, good potential target but um let's go uh slowly on this for the upside well for the upside probably uh yes i will start getting a little bit more comfortable with higher levels if we do push back above the lower side of this range but i think that for just for that extra confirmation uh a push through this downside line here would be ideal um so if we do get that uh, push above this downside line then yes i will get a little bit more excited with some higher levels within this previous range and then yes uh, the ideal ideal scenario is to aim for the upper side of this range now nasdaq 100 um looking at the picture here um look if um so far so good i would say because i what i said to you previously that as long as we stay somewhere you know above this territory above this hurdle maybe we could see a rebound here uh, i'm talking about the 13,740 level right here uh, we could get a rebound we could get a push higher and we did um but to get more comfortable with higher levels i think that yes a push above that uh psychological 14000 uh, territory would be required um if we do get that move then yes great more uh more buyers could join in here now um in terms of the downside i would say um if you're looking for some lower levels guys well probably the first step would be to keep an eye on this little hurdle this 13740 if we do drop and stay below it because as you can see here we did create a false breakout previously uh, or should I say this week um yeah we could then aim for this upside line but if that gets broken yeah i mean then of course all eyes are in that 50 percent retracement here on the fibonacci level uh because again the fibonacci that i have here is drawn from the high of the uh, from the highest point of november of 2021 to the lowest point of october of 2022 so as you can see we've managed to clear the 50 percent um but if we fall back below it then yes it could open the door towards some lower levels now okay guys let's jump into the us okay so yeah the i'm not even already talking about that debt ceiling i mean okay well we're keeping an eye on it of course yeah but you know um kind of it's a i'm tired of it. it's like a rerun show honestly it's like the same thing that we cannot reach we cannot reach a deal we cannot reach a deal okay no, okay no what can i say uh you know you're you're the elected ones right but anyway um for now look what i'm gonna go purely from the technicals and uh in general uh look the fact that we on on dow here for example we dropped below that thirty-three thousand mark um i talked about this i said to you that if we do drop and stay below it then yes i'll go further south so far this idea is working out uh, my next target is the 32,500 territory, approximately around here, guys. Um, not the this specific level, but the area around that level or near that level, and particularly the 32,500 zone. Um, look, today we have the um, the PCE numbers coming out. So the beloved uh, Fed uh, inflation gauge. So yeah um it's a kind of a less volatile measure of inflation so keep your eyes on the core one uh today um that one it excludes the uh food and energy prices so yeah that's something that the fed will be keeping a close eye on uh also the headline of course itself but in general look the forecast right now for the core uh pce year-on-year -year number is actually the same 4.6 uh 
so the expectation is the same as the previous one, four points plus four point six. Now the headline one, um, the headline inflation number, in the year on year one is expected to decline from four point plus four point two to plus three point nine. Well, will that be the case? Let's wait and see. Um, I'm not really sure how the market will react, but I think that what is interesting is this. If you remember, I keep kept on talking that this will eventually get closer to that 50%. You know, we were at around nine, something like that, um, you know, percent, but everybody's like kind of saying that there won't be any um, increase of interest rates during the next meeting, which is going to be in the, on the 14th of June. Look, and it might not be. The only thing is that we cannot exclude the possibility of, you know, not having a rate hike. So, and this is where the, you know, the Fed watch tool here uh, is coming in handy because look, I said to you that wait, wait for it because we still have a bunch of data to come out. And this is what I said to you after the last meeting, uh, we still have this, this period and this period between two meetings, we'll, I will have a bunch of data to come out. We will have, yes, we'll have the PCE, we'll have the job numbers again, uh, we'll have the inflation numbers again, the main ones. So, uh, yeah. Um, a lot to watch, guys, a lot to watch. And in general, the Fed minutes that came out this week, um, again, those were unclear. It wasn't that they're, you know, 100% not going to in increase or anything. No, they again, they divided between, you know, 50-50 and uh, like, go figure, you know. But um, at this point, look, the way let's try to position ourselves at least accurately, correctly, carefully, um in here and uh yes i think that would be the easiest option just to go keep your eyes on some of the levels some of the lines you know so uh, basically apply the technical technicals uh, right now so look and here um and for now like i said as long as we stay below that thirty-three thousand mark i am aiming for that 32 and a half uh 32,500. uh the German and did I miss Nasdaq? I oh, know, sorry, I talked about Nasdaq. Uh, the German index. So uh, the look at here, look at this. Fifteen thousand eight hundred territory is working out nicely. Well, wh what do you know? Uh, so it's providing fantastic support for now. Yes, we cleared it yesterday. Okay, that's fine. But we eventually kind of stayed above it. So yeah. Uh, if you're looking for some lower levels, then I would say a drop below the fifteen thousand eight hundred territory would be required. Um, for that extra confirmation, a drop below the 5, 15,700 zone would be ideal as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, for the upside, I would like to see a push back above the 16,063 territory, and then we'll go from there. What I don't want to see is another ranging moment here, you know. But look, uh, still, we cannot exclude that scenario. Maybe, yes, it will start rebounding from this 15,800 and pushes higher and then starts moving sideways here again. Yes, if you're, you know, if you don't like that, uh, if you're not a range trader, then yes, you're, you're not going to love it. But you'll you know we always try to find some sort of positive you know some positive things and everything so basically what i want to say is that mm, if it starts moving sideways here maybe it's going to be the beginning of a you know a complex head and shoulders pattern because look we have our left side here we have our head and then if let's say if this starts moving sideways here for a little bit then maybe you know it could break out somewhere here and you know move lower so that's why my uh downside scenario is from around here so like well not from this one but from around this uh 15,800 zone and then yeah we could go further south for the upside, I would need to see a nice, good, strong push back above the 16,063 territory in order to go, uh, in order to consider some moves to the upside. Uh, dollar index, mm, the US dollar index, DXY, and yeah, we pushed higher. Look, um, the formation that's happening here, it sometimes is a bit of a bearish one. So whenever you have something like this, and a, a big one, a big candle, and then you have like a smaller one like that, uh, we could see a little push higher, but let's say if we struggle to um, overcome, or let's say even if we do overcome it, but stay above this 104.25 territory, um, well, that's where um, I would say uh, the downside scenario could kick in. I mean, we could see a bit of a retracement here. 
so, uh, long story short, um, look, in order for me to continue aiming for the upside, I need to see a push up of the 104.25 territory right here. This will confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially could attract uh, some buyers into the game. Now, for the downside, the idea, my ideal scenario is for is to wait for a drop below this upside line, below the 200 day EMA and this 103.56 territory. And then, yes, we could go from there. Um, so yeah, simple approach on DXY. Um, let's let's kind of let's say let's continue monitoring the situation here, and of course uh, be careful. Like I said, maybe it's going to be all the way flat to until the uh, the PC comes out. So just giving you a heads up. Now let's jump into gold. Um, beautiful, beautiful mission accomplished. Um, I would say team we're heading home, but not no not really. Um, look. What I talked about, I said to you that this week that, you know, as long as we stay below this downside line, below the 50 day EMA or even this 1977 territory, I'll lean towards the downside, aiming initially for that uh, 100 day EMA, which is roughly around that uh, 1946 45 territory. Um, in it, before that, I said to you that I'm going to aim for the 1950. If we clear that, then it's 1945. And if we clear that, then it's 1940 or even maybe a test of this upside line. Now, the test did not happen of this upside line. Maybe unless I have drawn it a little bit too far uh, from these points. So, but yeah, still, no, no, no. Now I'm just trying to see what, basically, I'm just, now I'm just trying to kind of see be a little bit biased and you know try to see where it's, uh, something is not so uh long story short in general i would say mission accomplished great uh, great move here we tested the 100 day ema we are still below the 1950 territory but we're above still above that 19, uh, 1945 uh, above that 100 day ema if we do fall below it again i will lean towards this um towards this upside line um, this upside line is taken from the low of the 3rd of November of 2022. So good potential target. Let's see if we can reach that in general. Um, now then, in terms of uh, the upside, well, ideally, at looking at this picture, I would first of all would like to wait for a break of this downside line. That's first. And then um, a push maybe above this 1977 territory again, because look, um, it's it's also above this downside line. And around here, we also have that 50 day EMA. So in other words, like a lot of confirmation here could come in if we do push back above this 1977 territory. I get it. We could be missing out on this uh, territory here, this area, but I rather say, stay safe than sorry, you guys. Um, silver, uh, so good rebound from this, which I yesterday created the kind of a broadening veg pattern, but look, it's not really like that. But anyway, um, look, we rebounded from this downside line, which is in the kind of downside support line, if, if there is something like that, basically. But uh, we rebounded from this and I uh, said to you that as long as we stay above it, then yeah, maybe there is a potential for this one to move back up. Um, also, the fact that we are holding above the 200 day EMA, that's kind of giving us a bit of a, uh, a bit of positivity. So and also, look, I, I've mentioned this before that on the dollar that uh, patterns like these, uh, like, for example, like, a, you know, downside, big downside candle like this, and then maybe something of a shooting star or doji or something like that. And then, yeah, there is kind of a tendency to, to see a, re a reversal back to the upside. But again, it doesn't always happen. So it's just an idea. For you to keep in mind but look in general i would say as long as we stay above this 200 day ema yep i will um uh, remain on the positive side a little bit not much but a little bit because and then i'm gonna aim for maybe for the 100 day ema and and i'll go from there uh, now jumping into platinum, guys. Uh, look, I have I haven't looked at this for quite a while, but um, in general, last time when I talked about this, I said I I have drawn these tentative upside lines, which uh, you know I said to you that don't focus on them too much, mainly focus on some of the levels. And look, the one thousand fifty four territory right here provided fantastic support initially, but then I said that if we do, do drop below it, my next target is the one thousand thirty six zone. 
Well, we got we got a test of that. Great. Uh, we tested the 100 EMA as well. Now let's redraw everything. So uh, these upside lines can go. Actually, I'll reuse them. I'll recycle them. Always recycle, guys. So yeah, this uh, this downside line. I'll do this one. And uh, look, if we want to go higher again on this one, I think the option the good option is to wait for a push maybe back above the 1054 territory somewhere around here at the same time we would be placed back above all of the um all of the ema oh sorry yeah all of the emas in my daily chart and then yes potentially this could attract a few more buyers into the game um for the downside what i would like to see here is a drop below the 100 day ema if we do get that then yes i will aim for the uh 200 day ema and we'll go from there uh now jumping into oil guys so <laughs> there we go guys look i talked a lot about this one and i said to you that um keep your eyes on this uh because again maybe we're gonna be forming a, a nice little beautiful ascending triangle pattern but until we get a clearance a good clearance of the 74 territory which is also the upper side of the of that um uh, this ascending triangle pattern then yes yeah, then we'll get a little bit more comfortable with the upside but at this point look beautiful hold up here and uh the negativity came in basically from let me just double check um i think that uh so yeah ah yeah there we go so the russian deputy prime minister uh said that um there might not be even uh cuts on the you know on 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 oil supply so okay uh that's and there we go that you know that kind of helped uh the price move back down a little and look i talked about this and i said to you that you know yes according to all the ta rules uh such patterns tend to break to the upside however However, um, we need to see a, um, a a nice good clearance. We need to see the uh, the body of the daily candle staying above that area in order to go further north. Um, this, this, then no, we just had like some false breakouts here, and then yes, we drifted back down. And uh, uh, this 50-day EMA provided fantastic resistance. There we go. We drifted back down. Now the question is, can we break this lower side of the triangle? If we can. This will open the door towards the psychological $70 level, level or even this 69.43 zone right here. And then we'll go from there. Um, jumping into corn, guys. Um, corn, uh, look, I've, I've, I've talked about this before as well. I've uh, mentioned these levels here. So look, uh, one, the scenario here worked out. So I have to adjust this chart in general. But I want to keep the levels for now. So... Um, we did fall below this 565 territory. I said to you, I'm going to aim for this 548 zone. Tick. And this is where we got held. Now, the down, further downside, yes, I need to see a drop below this 548 zone. But because we're seeing a nice little retracement here, I need to redraw this very quickly. And I think I need to do it this way. So... I am aiming for the upside right now, but I will aim only for this little territory right there uh this uh 600 zone this is going to be my barrier and uh if we reach that okay great but then maybe we'll get a little correction and uh, the reason why i'm saying this is because well maybe we could st be seeing a start of a possible uh, head inverted head and shoulders pattern now, this could be that left shoulder, this could be the head, and maybe we'll form a right shoulder. But again, that's unclear yet. I need to, like I said, let me just grab this. Mm, I will mark this target here, the 569. That's the low of the 3rd of May. Um, and I will not exactly aim for this level. I'm going to aim for the area near that level. Uh, but again, only if we do get a hold up near that 600 zone. If we clear the 600 zone, okay, we will go further north towards that 50-day EMA. Let me just put an arrow here on my chart. 
then yeah, and then maybe we'll get a little hold up. But so you know, let's not rush into anything. So for now, looking at this uh, at corn here, uh, it's quite interesting. And let's see, let's see if I'm throwing this idea out there. I want to see if this is going to work out or not. If my idea of an inverted head and shoulders will work out. If it doesn't, okay, back to the drawing board. But you know, something like this. So basically, let's see if we can form this. Uh, you know, this left shoulder we have already. Okay, I mean, it's not ideal um, because we don't really have like a, um, like a point here anywhere. So, mm, okay, let's um, let's see if this makes any sense. Um, right, aha, uh -huh. okay. This guy makes, could make sense. So maybe we could not even reach the 600 mark. Maybe we'll hit this or maybe we'll get a false breakout or something like that. Then yeah, that would be interesting. So basically if we push higher, we let's say break this downside line and then we hit, hit the, the 600 level and then we drift back down and stay below the downside line. Yep, that's my, uh, that could be my cue for some downside, a short term downside only. Uh, cotton. Cotton, I've looked at this before as well. So look, I said to you previously that if we do clear this upper, uh, upper this downside line, and then we clear this 85 uh, territory right here, then yes, I'll go higher. I'll aim for this uh, 200 day EMA. But if that gets cleared, I'll aim for the 91.87. Well, we got the kind of the test of the area near the 200 day EMA, and we drifted back to the downside. Um, we I, then I said to you that as long as we stay above this downside line, there is still potential, you know, to go back up. Well, we got a break of the downside line. What does that mean? That means we'll start examining the downside scenario. However, my downside scenario is only from around here, uh, from around this upside line, which, as you can see, continues to provide fantastic support. This is mm, taken from the low of the 24th of March of this year. So if we do clear it and we stay below it, I'll go lower. Ethereum. Now, oh, jumping into Ethereum. So we keep getting these false breakouts here. Uh, look, I'm going to rewind and, sorry, and re repeat what I've said before. Um, that, look, overall, we're, well, overall from the short term perspective, uh, because overall we're still above this upside line, taken from the low of the 22nd of November of last year. Uh, from the more of a medium term, uh, more from a medium term perspective like uh, uh from around what uh april or actually short term probably yeah that's more of a short term perspective uh from around mid april uh we do have a something of a falling veg pattern now look all these two uh scenarios kind of uh, like the falling veg and this upside line are confirming the upside scenario however uh, I said it before and I'll say it again. As long as we remain inside the veg, there is still potential for some downside. Unless we clear the upper side of that falling veg, then yes, then we'll consider some higher levels. But we're not getting that, so that means we're considering the downside scenario for now. Now, um, looking at the picture here, um, I would say, look, for now, if we do fall below the 100 day EMA here, shown as the green line, yes, I'm going to go to the downside. Uh, Polka dot, which I don't look at very often, guys, but uh, yeah, this one's interesting sometimes to look at, actually. Um, because it's in, it's in, in a way, it's moving in a similar fashion, but the reason why I wanted to pick this one up, because we are also near a key area of support, this one fi at 5.15. If we clear that, then guys, this is opening the door to some lower levels, like for example, the 4.23 or, okay, maybe we'll find some sort of uh, support somewhere here, but near the 4.72, but um, look, uh, the most important thing right now in general is, uh, at this point, is this territory right here. Let me just, up oh, there we go. Let me just highlight that a little bit. Oh, not too much. Let's leave it at 20. Um, there we go. So this is the territory. And if we do clear it, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low. And uh, yes, we could start aiming for some lower levels. Now, in terms of the 
upside. Um, what I would like to see here is maybe a push somewhere above this territory, this 5.61. Because at the same time, we would be uh, pushing back above this 50-day EMA and potentially maybe this is where it could attract some buyers into the game here. Now let's jump into a few pairs, guys. AUD, JPY. Um, so look, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna quick go quickly through a few of these because, and in a way, the scenario is still the same. I mean, if you watched my videos this morning, oh, this morning, <laughs> this morning, this week in the morning, um, then yeah, I mean, I'm sticking to my guns here, and look, I'm still aiming for the downside. As long as we stay below this uh, 91.32 territory, yes, I'm gonna lean lower. But at this point, given that the 200 day EMA is providing, um, you know, good support, if we do fall below it, that's where gonna be, it's gonna be my cue for some lower levels, and then we will I will aim for the lower side of the rising channel because at the moment we're in that. Uh, AUD and ZD. Um, there we go. We're still. Uh, there we go. We tested again the the, the broken the broken downside line from above. So this is what I like to see. And we rebounded and pushing higher. So look, we're still above the 50-day EMA. As long as we stay above that 50-day EMA, I am aiming for the 100-day EMA and then the 200-day EMA. EMA. Simple as that. Um, I'm not. I don't have any like strict levels here. Oh, actually, maybe this one. This is where it's perfectly coinciding now there we go 1.0765 that's what i like to see uh so this is going to be my first target uh 1.0765 and then if we clear that one then yes i'll go further north guys uh but let's me let me just um i think just draw my arrow up until here to be honest i think that this will be a little more accurate maybe then we'll get a little retracement or something like that but you know let's go slowly on this uh nzdjpy just a quick update boom we reached my target my target was the 50-day ema uh we're seeing a bit of a retracement so all good in a way all good um look for me right now to consider further declines i would think that a drop below that 50-day EMA is required at this point. Um, I've mentioned this already this morning that uh, these patterns sometimes tend to be bullish ones. So they tend to be a reversal pattern whenever you have a strong candle like this in the downside and then something like a doji here. Or in other words, where you have a, uh, a tail which is kind of maybe slightly higher or, or slightly bigger than the body of the of this candle, you know, and then maybe we could see a reversal, uh, a bit of a reversal, you know, it could be short term, it could just, you know, reverse sharply, go, you know, higher, for example, in this case, and then at the end of the day, just retrace back down. So it can still work, it still works out. This, this is the this is the scenario. It doesn't mean that we're gonna, you know, for the next few days, we're gonna start pushing higher. No, we could see a spike higher here, a nice move, strong move to the upside, but then by the end of the day, it could still drift back down and kind of, you know, fall, fall off here uh so this is what i'm talking about these kind of scenarios you know so just kind of be be careful uh usdjpy uh look uh, so far so good my target got reached 139.90 we even overshot that we hit that psychological 140 zone as well so uh i think it this now requires a bit of redraw here so uh this upside line can be redrawn this way just to kind of show show it as a, um, a nice steep upside line here now this arrow can go um, the downside scenario look okay if we do break this upside line um, yeah it could open the door to some lower levels but I think that my preferred scenario for the downside would be from in a drop from this 138.75 territory somewhere around here and then we could get, go and aim for that 137.58 um, if we clear that then yes uh, further declines are possible maybe towards that 50-day EMA but if we once again push higher and we climb above yesterday's high which is roughly around that 140.23, that's where I'm going to get a little bit more excited with the upside. Um, jumping into USD CAD, uh, good result here as well. Um, look, I've reached my 1.36. I said to you yesterday that I am aiming for the area between these two levels. Just bang on in between. Perfect. I'm I'm happy. Mission accomplished on this one. Good result. So because I said to you that as long as we stay above this 1.3568, I'm aiming higher. But I'm going to aim for this territory. So you can. Uh, this is what I said yesterday. Great result. Wonderful. What's next? Well, next 
I will take a, a bit of a conservative approach here. In order to go higher, I would like to see a push above the 1.36 to 68 here. This will confirm a forthcoming higher high. And uh, yes, potentially it could attract more buyers into the game. In terms of the downside, well, this downside line needs to get rid of. I need to get rid of it. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, a simple approach here. Uh, break uh, above. Uh, a break below this upside line um, and maybe also a drop below the 1.3568 could attract a few more sellers. US dollar against the Mexican peso. So just a quick update as well in this one, because um, look, it's, I talked about this downside line when I was covering this uh, this pair. If you remember, it was last week a little bit. Um, and uh, I said to you that, look, we have this downside line. We need to see a nice good push of that 50 day EMA. And we also need to see that staying below it. Uh, oh, sorry, below it, above it, um, in order to go further north. Well, we got that little flirt here. I mean, we did kind of stay a little bit, but still not ideal. Uh, and we drifted back down and we fell back below the 17.90 uh, territory. So uh, we're back below this downside line. In a way, as long as we stay below it, then this is the scenario that I'm going to look at. This potential idea of lower levels here again. The only thing is that I have I have my uh, target here uh, near this 1742 17.42 level, but I think I'm going to raise it a little bit. And uh, initially, I'm going to target this this little uh, level here. Uh, this um, this little territory. There we go. Um, so did I, did I capture it? There we go. Um, so 17. 53.54, something around those lines, basically. Uh, this is going to be my next target. Not this one lower a little bit, but this one. I want to see if this is going to hold or not. If it does, then maybe a bit of a rebound back down could be possible. If you're not comfortable with this scenario right now, what you can do here is, for example, you can keep your eyes on this little hurdle, this 17.75 area. Good potential area to watch because a nice good drop below it will con uh, will confirm a forthcoming lower low, and we could then aim for this 17.54 territory, and then we'll go from there. Um, so yeah, we could leave this territory just for it to sort itself out. And uh, once we get a clear break of this downside line again, and we push above the 50 day EMA, that's where, yes, I'm going to get excited with uh, some higher levels on this pair. Uh, GBP USD. So, oh, by the way, we got some data, I think, from UK. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, retail sales. Uh, retail sales numbers from UK, core retail sales uh, came out better than the... Well, then the forecast, I mean, the, the previous one got adjusted to minus 1.4. That I'm talking about the monthly number, uh, the uh, the month, uh, the the forecast for the month on month uh, core retail sales were was uh, one uh, plus 0 0.3 it came out plus 0 0.8. Good result. Uh, we're seeing some positivity here kicking in into um, to British pound here against the US dollar. Um, OK, that's fine. Look. I still I'm still going to stick to my idea. I'm not going to invent anything new here because what I said to you previously that if we do fall uh, as long as we remain below this downside line, I will continue aiming to the downside. We fell below my target this my hurdle this 1.23.92. Okay, that opened the door towards the 100 day EMA, got a reach, got a test of that. Now, if we do drop again below the 100 day EMA, my next target is the 200 day EMA. For the upside, I would like to see a break of this downside line and a push above the 50-day EMA. I have a simple approach on non-GPP USD. Nothing over too too overcomplicated. You know, just we're trying to kind of stick to that. Uh, GPP Aussie. Um, okay. Now, what like what to do with this one? Um, to be honest, I'm looking at this and kind of I'm seeing still some more positivity in this one. And look, as long as we stay above this 1.8926, I'm going to aim for the upside. And in general, to be honest, uh, given that this this week it already played out nicely here, <clears throat> because I was what I was saying that if we do push above the 1.8775, I'll go higher. Um, and we, yeah, I got that. And the fact that it's struggling to go all the way here, all towards this level. Look, maybe we'll, uh, oh, my voice is going down. Just bear with me one moment. <clears throat> there we go. Um, the fact that we are struggling, let's say, to go straight away to this level. Okay. I mean, we could still go there today. Um, as long as we stay, for example, above this area. But at this point, let's say if I have entered, uh, as I said this in, in the beginning of this week here on a breakout, if I have entered long, 
and I'm, I'm, I'm currently sitting somewhere around here. If you have a big position, I would say you can take half of it, you know, off and just enjoy your profits. Um, if, and then keep, try to see the other one running, or what you can do is just take all of your profits because look, oh, I, I would say like this, don't be greedy. Um, if, if it doesn't go there towards that area, towards that, uh, 1.9 T 37, okay, well, at least, you know, this is a, this was a good result. You, we've kind of, let's say like this, that, um, it covered around what? 75% of my, uh, road to that level. Okay, I'll take that. You know, 75% of that anticipated profit, that's fine. Honestly, don't be greedy. Just take it. Um, just, you know, you can, like I said, you can reposition yourself. Maybe, you know, you, you go along from here somewhere. But again, there then there's a problem of, you know, maybe a, re a retracement here. So, but look, do your calculation. What's more convenient for you? What's, what do you can, what can you afford to lose? And, you know, everything will be fine then. Just always uh, don't forget to take your profits, guys. Um, look, for the downside on this one, for me, I would take a very conservative approach here and I'll wait for a break of this upside line and then I'll go lower. GBP and ZD. Uh, mission accomplished. I can now rest and enjoy my life, honestly. This, is, this worked out perfectly because I talked about this in the beginning of this week and I said to you that, look, um, if we do climb above the 50-day EMA, I'll go higher, I'll go towards this 2.0150 territory. Uh, we clear that, I said that as long as we stay above it, then I'll go, my next target is the 2.03, or 2.04 zone right here. Couldn't be better, honestly, couldn't be better. This is just amazing, good, good trading. Uh, what's next? Well, now, yeah, let's wait for the weekend now. We can enjoy our lives here in, you know, uh, basically, look, of course, I'm joking, of course, you know, we're keeping an eye on this uh, 2.04 territory. If we clear it, yes, this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially could attract more buyers into the game. But given that we had a quite a decent up move here, uh, I'm curious actually to see if uh, this can work out. So what I'm going to consider here is maybe a possible retracement towards that 23.6% uh, on the Fibonacci. Um, and then if we do clear it, then yeah, I'll go lower. And look at this, by the way. Look how well this uh, 38.2 is sitting near my hurdle, which I which we broke. That's amazing. So basically, maybe something like this could be possible later on. But if this gets cleared, of course, if this 38.2 gets cleared, then yes, it could open the door towards that 50 or even maybe the 61. Point uh eight percent so uh so yeah at the moment like i said i'm watching that 23.6 um um here on the downside if we break below it then yes i'll go towards that 38.2 um for the upside 2.04 territory is the barrier for me to go higher uh euro chf very quickly on this uh so look i've talked through this whole week about this and i i think i'm I'm already tired, you're tired, everybody's tired about the same, look, it's it's a falling wedge. Uh, the idea here is like, look, we're, we could still see a slide here. And that's why I said to you, like, don't rush into anything. Yes, these patterns tend to break to the upside, but a break of the upper side is still needed. So until we get a break of the upper side, this could continue drifting lower uh, while it's in the pattern. But uh, what's interesting here is that this 0 0.9706 territory is providing good uh, support. If we clear it, that's where I'm going to aim for the downside. I'll aim for this um, uh, for this lower side of the falling veg. If it provides support once again, a rebound like that could be possible. So I think that these two arrows have to be uh, drawn a little bit differently. So basically, the sequence uh, in in a, in a proper sequence. So something like this. So for if we do drop below the 0 0.9706, yes, I'll go towards the lower side of the falling wedge here, we, which we could test. Um, if it provides good support, we could see a rebound back to the upside here. But if it breaks the lower side and stays below the lower side, guys, ignore the whole falling wedge. We can scrap that. Maybe, you know, we will we'll jump on something else. Euro GBP, one of my, oh, my unfavored pair. 
uh, because it has a mind of its own. I really don't like it, but I still look at it, guys. Anyway, look, I think that uh, last time when I talked about this, and you can see by the skewed arrows here, everything, um, I talked about this hi highlighted zone, which in a way still is working out. Okay, I'll keep that in, on the chart. I said to you also about this downside line taken from the high of the 27th of April. If it provides good resistance, another decline here could be possible. Uh, it failed to provide good resistance, but we cleared it. We drifted back below it. So in a way, it seems like it doesn't work. So we, I think I'll get rid of it. Um, what I'm going to do now here is I'm going to, in terms of the downside, I previously I had this level. I think it's time to get rid of it. It's not really the most exciting, the 0.8676 level. I think that what we need to do here is drag this one, grab this one, and uh, I think we need to maybe find something around these lines. So the 0.8670 could be a nice good target, actually. Uh, yes, we had, a, some, we had some breakouts, but those are false breakouts. So look, if we do a drop below the 0.8670, I will go a little bit to the downside here and then we'll go from there. For the upside, I would like to see a push above this territory and uh, above this highlighted zone, this area between the 0 0.8719 uh, and the 0 0.8728 levels here. And if we get that, great, I'll go a little bit to the upside, but only aiming for the EMAs first, because I don't know, maybe they'll provide good resistance or not. And finally, EURUSD. Boom. Uh, mission accomplished. Fantastic. And to be honest, if you were on, on this with me, so what I talked about, I said to you that if we do drop below this 1.0760 territory, my next target is the upside line together near this 200 day EMA. It didn't really exactly test this uh, le these levels, but came very close. I'll take that honestly. And now we can rest uh for the weekend um because look at this point i will it's it, for me at this point it's a little bit on the tricky side because look if i want to go lower i will wait for a drop below the 200 day ema and below this upside line uh that would be my ideal scenario here for uh the downside uh for the upside um well maybe we could keep an eye on this uh on this downside line, which is the shorter uh, term one, this one taken from the high of the 16th of May, if we can clear that one, okay, maybe, you know, we could, it could open the door towards some higher levels, but uh, we do have a, this downside line, which actually I'm gonna get rid of. I'm gonna stick to the EMAs here. The one, initially we'll aim for the 100 and then maybe the 50. So basically it's like, it's, it's it sounds here like a desperate bull who's trying to find some, you know, some, you know, possibilities here but to be honest i mean yes okay if we break this uh if we break this downside line and we go higher um okay i'll i'll go to the upside i'll aim for this 100 day ema um and then if we clear that one then my next target is the 50 day ema um and then we'll go from there basically so um long story short that's it guys that's it. And in, in general, uh, look, uh, in I have reached all my targets. And although I get it, there is this day with the PCE numbers that are coming out. Um, if, let's say, I have reached already my goals for this week, um, I will sit this one out. You know, I might sit this one out unless... Unless everything like, you know, my uh, unless I see a position where all my tick box, you know, all my boxes are ticked and... Uh, you know, all my criterias are met and then maybe I'll do that. But if something's not good, uh, some if there's one box that is not getting ticked, um, today's Friday, guys. Leave it, honestly, leave it, leave it for next week. Uh, next week could be an interesting one because again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with the last trading days of, of May, um, we could see some volatility. And of course, the dead ceiling show, uh, that could, you know, bring in volatility. So just we'll continue monitoring the situation in there. Um, but yeah, look, we could see some sort of a big spike, a big drop or a big spike yeah, uh, at some point. But uh, for, for now, I'm just observing this because we're kind of, as long as we stay in between these two trend lines here, I'm just observing the price action on this one. So, and then like I said, guys, just be careful with everything. If, if it's not going good, just leave it, leave it for next week. It's Friday. You need to go into your weekend relaxed and, uh, you know, uh, without any stress and come back from your weekend also without any stress. Um, you just kind of have to uh, come out of the weekend not thinking about the markets. That's 
that's what you know what you need to do guys anyway enough of me talking have a beautiful trading day have a beautiful weekend everyone stay safe have your stop losses in place and uh risk only what you can afford to lose guys thank you very much for this week uh, and i really appreciate your your views your 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 rockets your comments guys thank you very much i'll leave a massive thank you here as always there we go guys thank you very much guys for everything and i'll see you on monday uh six o'clock gmt time yeah the usual thank you very much and bye-bye Hey there, thank you very much for watching this one till the end, I really appreciate that. So, like this video, we speculate your next mouse movement will be towards the subscribe button.